Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to introduce to you a brand new version. This is a water jet nozzle that I designed and built myself. It's made using 3D printing technology. Here it has two parts. One is the main body and the other is this compression tube. The 3D design is solid and sturdy. I'm not sure if it will actually work, so let's watch my video together and see how it turns out. For this project, I'm going to build a water surfboard using this water jet engine. I've already finished making all the parts, and now I'm going to show you how it works. Here's the shaft part. It has an oil supply tube, which will be connected to an oil tank above. The oil is continuously pumped down to the shaft housing. The shaft housing is made of aluminum and sealed with two O-rings at the front. This is the impeller, guys. This impeller is designed for engines with low RPM. Even with low RPM, it can still generate very strong thrust. That's because I designed and 3D printed this impeller with a very high pitch angle. And since the 3D printed material isn't super strong, I made the blades quite thick to increase their durability. So what do you guys think? Do you think this impeller can handle around 5,000 RPM? Take a look. I'm going to show you two impellers that I designed and tested. The blades have a steep pitch angle, and that really puts a heavy load on the motor, but in return, they generate a huge amount of thrust, even without needing super high RPM. This motor is for the water surfboard, guys. The impeller shaft is 10 millimeters in diameter and made of ultra-hard chrome-plated stainless steel. Now I'm going to start assembling everything so you guys can see how it all fits together. About the clearance, I've designed the gap between the impeller blades and the housing to be only around 0.5 millimeters, so it's very tight. At the upper part here, I've made it a bit wider so water can flow in more easily. And right here are the tubes for cooling the motor, cooling the ESC, and also the tubes for drawing water from inside the surfboard and pushing it out through this outlet. And this part here is the stator, which is a stationary set of blades. It helps prevent the water flow from swirling around so that when the water is compressed and pushed out, it goes in a straight direction, which is the way to generate the strongest thrust. In this stator section, I've also designed two stainless steel bearings spaced about three centimeters apart. Their purpose is to keep the impeller perfectly centered while spinning at high speeds so it doesn't touch or scrape against the outer casing. The stator fan section is fully equipped with seals and gaskets, everyone. This helps block water from entering the inside. Now, I'll proceed to reassemble it so you can see the overall look of this turbojet unit. It's quite thick with a 100 millimeter diameter. With fan blades like these, it can generate a very strong thrust. Before putting everything back together, I'm gonna apply a bit of grease to lubricate the shaft area. This step is quite important because it helps reduce friction and ensures smoother rotation over time which is especially crucial for components that operate at high speeds like this. The fit between the parts is extremely precise. If you look closely, you'll see how the shaft slides into place very smoothly with only about a team 5th millimeter clearance. On the top side, there's a slight gap of around 1 millimeter, which allows for just enough movement without causing any wobble. Meanwhile, at the bottom, the fit is much tighter and sits snugly against the fan shaft which helps maintain proper alignment and stability during rotation. Here at the back, you can see how effortlessly the assembly spins. It runs very quietly and smoothly without any part making contact with the outer casing. That's a sign of good engineering and precise machining. Additionally, there are two bearing rings installed at the rear of the assembly. These bearings play a critical role in keeping the fan securely in place, minimizing vibrations, and ensuring that the fan blades rotate with high accuracy and consistency. Altogether, these details contribute to the overall performance and durability of this turbojet unit. And here you can see it after I've connected it to the drive shaft at the front. Even though I haven't yet pumped oil into the shaft, it still rotates quite smoothly, which is a good sign of the precision and quality of the components. Now, I'm going to proceed with installing the bearing cover for this turbojet engine. This part is essential because it helps protect the bearings from dust and debris, ensures proper lubrication retention, and contributes to the overall durability and stability of the rotating assembly. Next, I'm going to connect these two main parts together, the front section and the rear section. In between them sits the fan, right at the center. 
Everything fits perfectly, everyone. Wow, the precision is incredible. The fit is extremely tight. At this middle joint, you could also add an extra layer of silicone gasket to improve the seal and prevent any leaks, especially if the unit will be operating in wet conditions or under pressure. All of the screw holes have been fitted with brass inserts, which I pressed into the 3D printed plastic parts. This means that when I tighten everything, it holds very securely and won't strip the plastic threads. For this assembly, I'll be using four screws to firmly clamp the two sections, the front and rear housings, together. When the turbojet is mounted onto the surfboard, there will also be two additional screws supporting the rear section. So, these four screws here are primarily responsible for holding the front and rear parts tightly together. And here it is everyone. This is the complete turbojet engine for my surfboard project. Once we add the motor and the outer casing, it'll be ready to use. This is a handheld drill that operates at a fairly low RPM, but even so, it's already able to generate quite a strong airflow. If you were to use a drill running at around 5,000 RPM, it would actually produce a tremendous amount of power and airflow. My drill here is only running at a relatively low speed, everyone, but despite that, it still manages to create a surprisingly strong airflow. All right, everyone, this video may have only lasted a few minutes, but it actually took me a lot of time and effort to make. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in the next videos. If you have any ideas for this engine, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. And don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again and see you next time.